You've heard me talk about John Henry and Tom Warner a lot on this show. They're the owners of the Boston Red Sox. They're the owners of Liverpool. They do it through a holding company called Fenway Sports Group. We did an entire segment, I don't know, maybe in a month ago, when LeBron James became a part owner. It was a big deal, remember? LeBron James, new owner of the Boston Red Sox. And I explained to you all that, in fact, LeBron James is not an owner of the Red Sox. He's an owner of the entity that owns the Red Sox. So by definition, he does sort of own the Red Sox, but he's not a direct owner of the Red Sox. He's a direct owner of something called Fenway Sports Group, and Fenway Sports Group owns the Red Sox. And I told you back when this story came out that this was not an example of John Henry and Tom Werner trying to get money from LeBron James, because that same day, they got three quarters of a billion dollars from a hedge fund. This was all about optics. And the Red Sox didn't announce that. The Red Sox, Fenway Sports Group, John Henry and Tom Warner announced how thrilled they were to have LeBron James and Maverick Carter as part of the group owning Fenway Sports Group. They had owned Liverpool for a bit. They actually just traded in. I don't think LeBron James wrote a check for a dollar. He just used his Liverpool shares, which were worth a ton of money, and made that a small investment in Fenway Sports Group. So everything's fine, right? It's up to me at Nothing Personal to tell you that it was very strategic to bring in LeBron James. There was a particular reason why they did it, but there was no way the Red Sox were ever going to admit that. In the press conference announcing it, they weren't going to admit that the fact that LeBron James is African-American, the fact that he's so far out in front of these social issues and how important it is that the Red Sox do not appear as white as they are. It was critical for the Red Sox and for Werner and for Fenway Sports Group to, to have diversity. That's 2021. And I said to you, even if that's the reason, I'm okay with it because progress has to start somewhere. I talked to you about Redbird Capital, the company that put $750 million into Fenway Sports Group and I showed you on their website how white they were at the top, but how they're now trying to get more people of color in at the associate level of their hedge fund. And I wasn't critical of Redbird Capital either because you've got to start somewhere. Fine. But today, Tom Werner was honest with you. Tom Werner gave an interview. Do you remember the Samson sit down we did with, uh, was it Joe Varden? Coca, is that who it was, who, who writes for The Athletic? And he was in the NBA bubble. I don't know if you remember that. Anyway, we did an episode with him. He came out with an article just today, and it was all quotes from Tom Warner. And I want to give you the quotes, and then I want to ask you to try to understand what in the heck is going on here. Tom Warner said, we want to feel that the Red Sox are an inclusive place where everybody feels welcome. And while that may seem like an obvious notion today, the Red Sox have a very complicated history when it comes to race relations. Let me stop you there, Tom. The history of the Red Sox is not very complicated at all. The history of the Red Sox is that it is a completely racist organization. The previous owner was a guy named Yawkey who didn't even allow integration with the Red Sox, didn't even have a black player until so long after there was integration in baseball. He was a complete racist, complete. So much so that Yawkey Way in front of Fenway Park was renamed by John Henry and Tom Warner. So much so that Yawkey's pretty much been erased in terms of the history of the Red Sox. How about the fan base in Boston? It's famous for racial epithets that are thrown at players. Absolute prejudice against black people. I don't understand why you would ever say that it's complicated. It's actually quite simple. He then said, we work hard to create a more diverse and, ins and inclusive organization from top to bottom. And he said, and here comes one of the first of three money quotes. It's, on, it's too good. I'm excited that LeBron James and Maverick Carter are owners of the Red Sox because this helps provide better representation of baseball to our fans. I'm trying to picture racist fans in Boston saying, you know what? I'm not racist anymore. 
I'm absolutely tolerant of every person of color because LeBron James, my beloved LeBron James, is an owner of the Red Sox. And then I'm picturing a black fan in Boston, not stepping into his or her shoes, because I can't, but picturing a black fan, imagining subject to systemic racism in Boston, saying, oh my God, everything's good now. LeBron James is an owner of the Red Sox, and I can really appreciate that. I understand what it is to be a billionaire like LeBron James and to be an owner of the Red Sox. And now when I walk down the street, no one in Boston stares at me. No one thinks that I'm going to mug them. Everyone's fine now. I don't think you can fix systemic racism by having LeBron James as an owner of Fenway Sports Group. I think that you want to believe that's what you're doing, but you certainly should not be saying it. But then he kept going. He said, I will be surprised if LeBron and Maverick don't weigh in on management decisions of the Red Sox and Liverpool. I would welcome their thoughts. Can you picture LeBron James calling up Tom Werner, calling up Chaim Bloom? Hey, Chaim, I got to tell you, I'm not too pleased with Kike Hernandez and the fact that you gave him $14 million over two. I got a way better idea for a player that you should be signing. And by the way, how could you not do a hit and run in the third inning when we were down two runs with a man on first? What in the hell was Cora thinking? Really? That's what LeBron James is going to do? Maybe what Tom Warner meant by management decisions is they're going to call up LeBron and say, hey, LeBron, uh, we want a better deal with Nike, and we'd like you to go to all of your corporate sponsors and all of the people you do business with, and could you do us a favor? I know you're now a Pepsi guy, and we're a Coke stadium, but if we can get rid of Coke, is there any way you could have Pepsi come in for 20 million bucks a year? That would be amazing. Is that LeBron being weighed in or his viewpoint being looked at as important to run the Red Sox? Here's a better one. Bring, 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 bring. Um, hello? Um, yes. Hi, it's me. Um, I am the, uh, I'm, I'm in the pitch right now in Liverpool. I got, a, I got a small issue here in Liverpool. I don't believe that the configuration and the players we have, they're in the right place. We need to drop a different play. Can you help with that? No. What he can help in Liverpool with is exactly what he can do in the United States is he can bring to bear some of the relationships he has in the corporate world. So why would you say, Tom, that you'd be surprised if they don't weigh in? You brought him in purposefully. You are totally using LeBron the way LeBron is using you. LeBron is using you for your money, Tom. And the fact that you've got billions of dollars in investments in Fenway Sports Group because he wants to be the principal owner of an NBA team. And then Tom Werner says, you know, we may want to buy an NBA team. Guess what will happen with Fenway Sports Group? They're going to buy an NBA team. And guess what LeBron is going to be? The controlling owner of the NBA team. <laughs> he went on to say they have a collaborative relationship. I would actually say their wisdom and their experience is going to be hugely helpful to us going forward. Hugely helpful. He actually even acknowledged, even acknowledged that they want an NBA or NHL team at Fenway Sports Group. Of course they do, because that is why they brought in the $750 million. They're totally using LeBron, and LeBron is totally using them. That makes it mutually beneficial, I guess. LeBron James. Isn't he the one who every Celtics fan hates because of the rivalry? I don't know. When, when he was with the Heat for four years, it was major, his rivalry with the Celtics. Now he's on the Lakers. Obviously, the Lakers and Celtics don't get along. It's just very strange to me. Anyway, it's going to happen. LeBron James is going to get an NBA team you're going to see. So I have one word of advice for uh, owners out there and for players and for anybody. When you are making a business move and you are doing it solely for business reasons, which is well within your right, whether it means, and I'm a consequentialist, as you guys know from listening to Nothing Personal, for now, I don't know, what are we at, Coca? 343 episodes. 
you know very well as a consequentialist what I mean. And that is anything that's in the best interest of your business and that can have a nice result tangentially, that can be better for the community, that can be better for society, that can lead to better social change, that can end racism, can end all of the things that are bad about our society, I'm all in. But when you're too obvious about it, it takes away the benefit that you're trying to gather. And by Tom Werner giving this interview, while he thought he may have been helping, the truth is he wasn't. Because there's one thing that happens, and I spent a lot of time actually talking to Mike Hill about this, president of baseball operations, former of the Marlins, worked with him for years. We were talking about the rules in baseball and the rules in football, especially the Selig rule, the Rooney rule, where they want to give draft choices, take draft choices away, add draft choices to make sure minority candidates are part of ownership or part of coaching ranks, et cetera. And Mike Hill's comment to me, and it was the comment of many people with whom I spoke, said, we want people to get jobs and we want black people to get jobs we want black people to be owners. We want black people to rise to the top of organizations because they've earned that right. We want them to have the opportunity to earn the right. We don't want handouts. We want opportunity. It's about opportunity. So when you bring in LeBron James, you're not giving LeBron James opportunity to be an NBA owner. He's got the opportunity without you. You're bringing him in for the sole purpose of business. Period. It's nothing personal. 